My name is Nathan Tabor. I'm with Handling Life, and Handling Life produces materials from a Bible-based, Christ-centered perspective. Um, and it really focuses in on how do you take God's Word, how do you take what the Bible says, and apply it to your everyday life. Sometimes, I mean, I don't know about you, but in my life, sometimes I struggle with that. You know, I'm going through something, and I don't know, you know, what the Word says about it, or I can't find a Bible verse to sync up to it, or I've got a question, you know, is this right or is this wrong? And I don't know where to turn to. And that happened in my own life. I, I've authored a book called Modern Day Jonah. It's a story of my life of where I chose to do what I wanted to do, like Jonah did. I didn't do anything wrong. I didn't do anything illegal or unethical from a, a, you know, an earthly, a world standpoint. But I did things wrong from God's standpoint. And if you're there, you know what that causes. It causes grief and storms and conflict and stress and anxiety. And if you're there, then the question becomes, well, how do I get out of it? What do I do? And one of those solutions there, so whether you're you know, walking with God or walking away from God, one of the important things if you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ so you've come to Calvary, you've come to the cross, and you've admitted that without Jesus Christ, you're going to die and go to hell. So you have that personal relationship. One of the very important, like critical, crucial things for you and for me is to develop godly relationships. If you're a woman, find you know women. If you're a man, find men um, to help you. Um, Ecclesiastes talks about three chords. Um, there's, you know, in Proverbs, verses all throughout Proverbs 27, 17, as iron sharpens iron. You know, the only way you can sharpen iron, the only way you can sharpen a knife in your kitchen is with other metal. And so if you want to sharpen your relationship with Christ and with God, then you need to be sharpening that with another piece of metal, another Christian. Proverbs 19.20, hear counsel and receive instruction. Well, do you want to get counsel and instruction from someone who doesn't believe the way you do or doesn't have the same theology or the same morals and values? I mean, you could, but it wouldn't be very good counsel or instruction for your life, right? It's like literally driving up to somewhere in town and asking someone for directions who doesn't live there. How do you think that's going to go? not going to go very well. Why would you ask someone how to get somewhere who doesn't know where they are? So when you apply that same philosophy, same principle to your everyday life, it becomes pretty critical to develop these relationships or fellowship. And every Christian, I don't care who you are, you need fellowship. And I'm not just talking about Sunday morning, Sunday night, or Wednesday night, or church fellowship. I'm talking about one-on-one -on -one or a, group, a small group of fellowship where you can open up, where you can talk. Do you know what the word fellowship means in the Hebrew, the Bible meaning? It's defined as a bond, like glued together. People who come together for a specific purpose. I mean, that's what fellowship is. Sometimes we look at fellowship as, oh, well, I've just, you know, I've been to a, 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 an adult Bible, you know, Sunday school class, or I've been to church. Yeah, that's fellowship. But you need fellowship where you can talk to someone and tell them what's going on in your life. What are your struggles? What are your fears? What are your concerns? What are you going through that you don't think someone would understand? And that right there is one of the first thing that trips people up from having fellowship with other Christians. I know in my own life it does. And with other people I've worked with and talked with, that's something that really holds people up. The thought of telling someone else what's going on in your life, um, I don't know if it's a fear or you know, scared or what it is, but if that's what's holding you back, you know, really think about that. 
you know, the sin that you have in your life is probably different than the sin that I have in my life. But every person has sin in their life. Every person is going through something. If you ever meet that Christian who says, oh, my life is great and everything is perfect and, you know, God's just blessing me beyond blah, and they blah, you know what? I'm from the South, so I'm going to say they, they ain't telling the truth. Because if someone's life is going that grand and things are so wonderful, you want to really kind of ask them, don't, but you really want to kind of ask them, like, I mean, that's not what the Bible says. That's not what scriptures say. I mean, even Jesus went through trials and tribulations. Satan tempted him when he was fasting. Satan tempted him in the Garden of Gethsemane. So what's holding you back? Do you feel disconnected from God? Do you feel like God won't care? Do you feel like, you know, why should I go take my time and sit down and talk to others when God's not answering any of my prayers? Sometimes I have that feeling. I'm a you know, small business owner, entrepreneur, and you know, work on a deal for, for weeks or months, and then it fall apart at the end. person just never calls back. They don't respond. It's kind of like, God, I mean, well, why did you bring me through all that? I mean, why did you bring me to the table in the first place? You know, what's going on in your mind? Are you concerned about what others will think? Well, I can tell you right now from my own personal experience, if you think that other people around you don't know what you're going through, you're sadly mistaken. Most people who are around you, your loved ones, your family, your friends, your coworkers, if they know anything about you, if they know your personality, they know when things aren't going well. So now all of a sudden, though, you build a wall and you become that person like I was that says, well, you know, if that's a Christian, if Nathan's a Christian and that's the way he acts when things don't go his way, no thank you. So you got to really look internal like, what's going on? Why aren't you wanting to have fellowship with others? Do you have the excuse of, I don't have time? Or, you know, I'm not really a bad person. I don't really do anything wrong. You know, I give my time, I give a little bit of my money to God, so I'm good. That could be your excuse. You might not feel, you might feel like God's right where you, where you want Him in your life. But for some reason, you're disconnected. Well, let me tell you the benefits. Let me encourage you why you should seek fellowship from others. One of the first and most important is encouragement. See, other Christians, they know what you're going through. They can talk to you. They can give you wisdom and counsel. They can encourage you. Look at the story of Saul. You know, Saul went around killing Christians for the majority of his beginning of his life. And then he had a conversion on the road to Damascus. And then he came back as Paul. Can you imagine what people, what, you, what I would think or you would think if the Christian killer, the Christian punisher came walking into the street going, hey, I'm on your team now? Well, they didn't want anything to do with him. So Barnabas goes over, puts his arm around him and says, come on, Paul. Let me help you. Can you imagine how, that, how Paul felt at that moment that someone finally accepted him and was willing to love him and talk to him and care for him? Could you be that person that someone needs in their life right now? Could you be the Barnabas and there's a Paul around you that you need to go put your arm around? You need to be an encourager. Spiritual growth. You know, the iron sharpens iron. The fellowship can help us deal with our past. There might be something in your past that's holding you back from serving God. It can help us deal with the future. Hey, what do I need to do? How do I need to deal with this area in my life? I don't like what I'm doing over here. Someone can help you spiritually grow. Look at James 4, 8. In the Bible it says, Draw nigh to God, and He will draw nigh to you. See, God's already there. We just need to draw closer to Him. So cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts. And don't be double-minded. We can't serve two masters. We can't ride the fence. We either got to decide where we want to go and serve God. We're going to fail. We're still going to be sinners. But if we're striving to serve God, we can grow. And the more we grow, the closer we get to God. The closer we get to God, the more we grow. It becomes this will that becomes a process. 
people can help us stay on that track. When we get discouraged, when, we, when we're down. When you're down, someone can encourage you, and when they're down, you can encourage them. In fellowship, we can help others during the time of crisis, when things aren't going well. You get a bad call on a, a, a health report, or you lose your job, or something's going on in the relationship with your spouse or your kids. Look at the story of Paul and Silas. Here they are in jail together. I mean, can you imagine what a miserable place? Those, those jails were nothing like we have today. I mean, these people were, were you know, had no rights, no anything. And what are Paul and Silas doing? They're in the worst situation they can be really in their life, except maybe l being right on the guillotine, you know, getting ready to lose their lives. They're right below that. And what are they doing? They're singing. They're praising God. And they're praying. So they're helping each other. They're helping calm each other's spirits and encourage each other in this time of crisis. And if you know the story, I mean, you know, they're not whining, they're not crying, and the Lord comes along and the, this miraculous event happens, and they're out of jail, and what happens? The jailer runs up to them and says, Hey, what do you have? What do, Paul, what do you have? Silas, what do you have? Because I want that. Because if you, in a time of crisis, can be praising and worshiping someone, worshiping God, I want to know that God. So think about that in your life and in my life too. I mean, I, I have I've had to look back over my life and know that I was a bad um, testimony to what a Christian should be like. But wouldn't it be encouraging if someone came up to you and said, Hey, Keith or... Sarah, or whatever your name is. I notice how you handle things. I notice you went through a really tough patch there and you kept praising the Lord. What's different about you? Wouldn't that be cool? The next is trusted counsel. You know, to go to someone and say, I'm going through this and know that they're not going to go tell everybody in the church. You know, I, I despise gossiping. Especially those that the form that comes in prayer request. Hey, did you, you know, people at church, did you, could you hear what Brother Nathan did? We need to pray for him. That's not a prayer request. So you need someone in your life that you can go to and say, what do you think about this? What do you think about this business deal? How should I handle this situation with my spouse? How should I handle this with my kids? I'm thinking about doing this. What do you think? And then be able to give you godly counsel, godly wisdom godly advice, and then not go tell everybody in the church or the community or at your job. You need to develop that because then you're able to get a different perspective. Then you're able to see God's Word from someone else's perspective, but then you can also help others in their time of need. One of the last ones is accountability partners. Someone who can hold you accountable and that you can hold others accountable. And this is where it kind of gets real you got to be honest with people. You know, don't let the thought of, uh, you know, what if I tell others or what if I tell God what I'm going through? What are others going to think? Or what is God going to think? We know God already knows. God already knows everything that you're going through. When He sent His Son to die on the cross for, for this wretched sinner, me, He already knew every sin I was going to do. He already knows every sin you've done and going to do. So why not just go ahead and tell Him about it? And then find someone in your life that can hold you accountable. Hey, I struggle with this. If you'll develop that relationship and that fellowship with someone, it will, it will help you so much in your life. And the last here is prayer partners. Someone that you can pray with, whether it's in person, whether it's in, you know, through Zoom or Skype or Facebook Messenger or text or over the phone. Hey, I'm struggling with this. Hey, I've got this big decision. I've got a good job, but I've been offered this job over here, and I don't know if it's God's will for my life or not. You need somebody, one or two or three people that you can take that to and say, Hey, will you pray with me? Will you help me see what is God's will for my life here? If you don't have that, if you'll develop it, I promise things in your life will be so much better and in closing here, I want you to think about this. I want you to really consider, will you commit to developing that fellowship with others? 
Will you commit to finding one or two or three people? And it's going to take you. See, other people want this. I wanted it in my life for years, but I was always like, well, no one's ever asked me to do this. And then God was kind of like, hey, why don't you ask others to do it? And I want to encourage you. Stop waiting for someone to ask you, and you ask someone. Look at Ecclesiastes 4.12. It states, Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. Do you know what three strands are? It's three smaller ropes that come together that are twisted together, and they become stronger. They become tighter, and it makes that cord harder to break. See, if we're out by ourselves and we don't have that foundation, those fellowship, those relationships, it's easier for us to be pulled away from God. It's easier for us to be pulled away by the stress and the burdens of life. But if we wrap ourselves together and put God in the middle and Jesus Christ in the middle, then we're stronger and it's harder for us to break. So I want you to, I want to close on this. Philippians 2.13 says, For God is working in you, giving you the desire to obey Him and the power to do what pleases Him. And if you will develop fellowship, if you'll develop godly relationships in your life that can help you, whether it's the good times or the bad times or accountability partner or prayer partner, if you'll develop that fellowship, you will find it is easier to obey God. You find it's easier to share God's word with others. You'll find it's easier to weather the storms of life. Everything I've talked about here is the Bible. Everything that I've talked about has a scripture behind it that says this is why we should do it and this is the benefit of it. And that's really what God's word comes down to. Hey, here's what you should do. And if you do it, here's the benefit. My name's Nathan Tabor. I'm with Handling Life. The website's handlinglife.org. If I can answer any questions for you, please let me know. Uh, if you don't feel comfortable with me, find someone. Seek out a brother or a sister in Christ. Seek out a, a pastor or a deacon or elder in your church and say, hey, can you help me with this? Because if you'll draw nigh to God, what does He promise? He'll draw nigh to you. Thanks. I hope this has been an encouragement to you. I hope God will continue to work in my life and that he will continue to work in yours.